Christian is one that has the fruit of the Spirit. A Christian is one that seeks first the kingdom of God and does what's right. And we're going to go right on down the line with really what is a Christian and do you really want to be called a Christian? Now, first of all, if you're going to be a follower of God, I've got a little simple sermon here that I've preached for years. Uh, you need to realize that you've got to do what God tells you to do. You can't do what you want to do. Uh, you can't make up your own scriptures and uh, make up your own teachings. And if God says it, you've got to believe it. Now Jesus warned, you know, that the way to heaven is straight and narrow, and few people find it. It's, it's not going to be the most crowded road in town uh, when it comes to going to heaven. Uh, the, the, the requirements of being a Christian are strict and plainly given in the Word of God. So let's, let's look at this. It's, I call this the serpent, the leper, the ark, the blind man, and Jesus. And uh, it's going to be a simple sermon, one that you can retain and take with you. And it, it simply brings out the fact that if God says it, he expects us to do it. Just like he says it. How many of you believe that? I believe you believe that. Or you wouldn't be here today. The first is found in Numbers 21, chapter 21, uh, verses 6 through 9. The people had turned against God. They were living in their sin, which was a continual thing with uh, the Old Testament people. And uh, one of the famous phrases that we always can quote from the Old Testament is the phrase that said, and once again, once again, they would go out and they'd get in trouble and they would turn from God and they would start worshiping idols. And what is an idol? An idol is anything that you think more of than God. Anything that you think more of than God. And they would create these idols and they would start worshiping how they wanted to worship, what they wanted to worship. And each time they would end in disaster. A life without Christ, a life without God, is going to end in disaster. The things of this world are temporary. They're not going to last. You young, good-looking girls will not always be young, good-looking girls. That's temporary, see? And there'll come a day that you'll use all kinds of gimmicks and, and uh, makeups and powders and paints and uh, revitalization things and all that, but you're still not going to always be young girls. You're going to change. You're going to grow into mature, wonderful, beautiful ladies. See? Uh, that, that's part of life. I'm not what I used to be. Things change. My stomach has fallen down where my chest has fallen down where my stomach used to be. I used to have a protruding chest. Now I've got a protruding stomach. You see, things change. Things change. And uh, these people had gone back in sin. They thought they could do what they wanted to do and continue to 
to receive God's blessings. But that's scary. And you really know better than that, don't you? You know when you're doing right. And you know when you're doing wrong. You know. But you think you can get by with it. And you push it to the limit. And that's what they'd done. And uh, so God sent this plague upon them. And the plague was serpents. And the serpents started biting the people. And people were dying by the thousands. Because... God had sent this plague upon them because they had decided that they wanted to worship and do other things than what God had asked them to do. Well, Moses went to God and he begged for mercy. He often did. And he said, please, please, please uh, help us out. Uh, Don't kill all of us because of our sin, because of our shame, because we have stopped obeying you. See, that was, that was the phrase. They had stopped obeying God. They were going to do what they wanted to do. They were going to worship like they wanted to worship. If they wanted to worship a frog or a hog or a cow or, or whatever, you know, they were going to worship the item of their choice. And God said, you're not. You're not. And so he sent this plague. And these serpents were just biting everybody that, that was living in sin, and they were dying by the thousands. And Moses said, please, please, please have mercy. Now listen. I'm taking a little time in this story because I want you to follow me, and this is going to go through all the stories today. God told Moses, make a serpent. Make it out of brass. Put it on a pole. And everybody that looks upon that serpent will not die. That'll save their life. Now I want you to listen. Don't, it, don't, it don't make sense, does it? Uh, a serpent was biting the people and killing them. God said, make one out of brass, put it on a pole, and everybody that looks will live. But then God went a little further and explained the way he operates, and he said, if they don't look, they'll die. Is that simple enough? Don't make sense. Serpent out of brass on the pole. Look. You be, I mean, that ain't nothing about that makes sense to me. What, what about a serpent? What about a brass serpent could save you? What, what, what kind of medicine could looking on a brass serpent give you? How could it heal you? It's just a serpent of brains. Right? But you know thousands died because they said, we don't think you have to do that. And we're not going to do that. We're going to do what we've been doing. Now what do you think of that? 
<clears throat> All who looked lived. All who didn't look died. Is that simple enough? God didn't say, what do you think of this? God didn't say, I want your opinion. He said, look and live. Don't look and die. Now, whose fault was it that these people died? Why did they die? Because they wouldn't obey God. Just that simple, wasn't it? It's not for us to ask God why. It's for us to obey Him. He said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments, didn't he? All right, we got, this, got the snake out of the way. Now let's go to the leper, 2 Kings chapter 5. You all know the story of Naaman. I don't have to go into a lot of great detail there. Captain of a regiment of, of military people, an honorable man, man of power and position. And he was covered with leprosy. And the little girl said, there's a prophet back where I came from that God can heal that leprosy. And Naaman had tried everything there was to try, I'm sure, being a man of power and wealth and influence. Then the Mayo Clinic and Duke and Medical University in Charleston and, and all these places. You know, I was watching a, a thing this week about uh, these things that invade our bodies. And it, it was a scary thing, wasn't it? I mean, uh, so you can get bit and, and, a, and a bug goes in your body and it goes through your body and it it just invades your body, and all these brilliant doctors couldn't figure out. It took them, took them, it seemed like forever to figure out what was wrong. And it was a little bug or a worm or, or whatever that had invaded the human body. It kind of made me afraid to eat. I may cut back on some things. You know... Well, you don't know. You don't know if you're gonna get a worm or a bug or a, or what when you eat some of this stuff. But this guy had leprosy, and the doctors couldn't heal it. And the medicine couldn't heal it. And when you had leprosy, you died. Your, your skin rotted. It fell off the bones. And uh, you couldn't go around anyone. You had to holler, holler unclean. If somebody come around, you, you had to warn them, unclean, unclean, I've got leprosy. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. You, you didn't know the love. You didn't know the joy of, of being around your family and your friends. It was a horrible death. Someone has described it as skin cancer all over. But this man went to the prophet of God, and he's, the prophet of God didn't even come out. He sent his servant out, said, go wash in the pool, the river, go dip yourself seven times. And you'll be cleansed. Now, would that have made sense to you? I'm sure he'd taken a bath every day. I'm sure he'd dipped in the river many times. It just didn't make sense. What was dipping in this nasty water? He said, I got clean water back home. 
You want me deaf in this nasty water. And finally, some of the people talked him into it. And he went down there and he dipped one time, two times, three times, four times. Each time he'd come up and no doubt look at his skin. It hadn't changed a bit. Same, same plight, same leprosy. And he did that six times and he still was covered with leprosy. Old nasty water. But the seventh time, when he did exactly, when he did exactly what the prophet of God said do, He came up and his skin was like the skin of a baby. Completely healed. What did one more dip make a difference? What did one more? If six couldn't do it, how did seven do it? What was it in that seventh dip? He obeyed. God, exactly. Did it matter? Yes, it mattered. Six dips, he still had the plague. He wasn't a little bit better. He wasn't some better. He still had the plague. When he dipped the seventh time, when he obeyed God, exactly. He came up and his skin was like a baby. Obedience. Obedience to God. They came to Jesus' mother one time and wanted her to have a talk with Jesus because he wasn't doing things like they wanted him to do them. I guess they thought mom could have some special input. You know what she told them? She said, if he says it, you do it. If he says it, you do it. Naming the leper when he did exactly what God said. The people in the wilderness, when they looked upon the serpent, they lived. Until they looked, or if they did not look, they died. Are you understanding how God operates? And we studied in Hebrews Wednesday night that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Same God. Same God. You want to know God? You go to the Old Testament and you, you see that He don't fool around. And He expects obedience. The ark. You know the story of the ark. Noah preached 120 years, not a single convert. Not a single, you talk about discouraging preaching, 120 years, nobody got saved. God said it's time. God said it's time. Everybody's going in the ark. Better get in. Nobody got in except eight people. And that was Noah and his family. Now I want to ask you a question. How many people were saved that didn't get in the ark? 
How many? What about the women and children? You mean if you didn't do what God said exactly as he said it, you didn't get saved? Well, Peter says in 1 Peter 3.21 that God uses baptism today as he used the ark back then. Now, how many people that's not been baptized are going to be saved? He said, where the like figure whereunto baptism does now also what? Save you. Did you know the Bible says that? God told me one time, he said, if you show me where the Bible says baptism saves you, I'll believe it. Well, I just turned to 1 Peter 3.21. I mean, it wasn't that hard to find. The like figure, comparing us with the days of Noah and the ark. How many people were saved that didn't get in the ark? The like figure whereunto, or by comparison, baptism doth now also save you. Does that say baptism saves you? Don't make sense, does it? Serpent didn't make sense, did it? What was so spectacular about a brass serpent? Dipping in that dirty water didn't make sense, did it? But what was it that saved the people in the days of Noah? Those that obeyed, that believed what God said. That's what it was. The difference in those that got saved and those that didn't got saved was did they believe what God said and did they do what God required? Now, you get around that if you can. Get around that if you can. But it boiled down to belief and obedience. That's the ark. Then the blind man, John 9, came to Jesus begging, I want to see. Now, won't you listen to this? Jesus spit on the ground. Spit on the ground. Took the spit. Made up a little mud. Rubbed it on his eyes. Does that make sense to you? Is that what Dr. Dooley Fauci would have done? But when he done that, the blind man still couldn't see. All he had was muddy eyes. And he said, go wash in the pool as Siloam. And you know the blind man, when he did what Jesus said to the letter, he went, washed the mud off, And you know what a crazy thing happened? He saw. But he didn't see until he did what Jesus told him to do. Is that right? You read that all you want to.
He didn't see. I don't care what his mama believed. I don't care what his daddy believed. I don't care what his preacher said. He didn't see until he obeyed God. 100%. And he saw. He saw. He was saved from blindness. The people in Noah's time were saved from the flood. The leper was saved from leprosy. Right? Am I right? The people who looked on the serpent were saved when they looked. And Jesus said, Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized will be saved. Now when were they saved? We got all kinds of people out here getting people saved without being baptized. One guy said to me, well, Jesus just said that one time. How many times does Jesus have to say something? How many times did he have to say, go wash in the pool of Siloam? How many times? See? 81 times in the Bible it teaches baptism. 81 times. How many times does God have to tell us for it to be true? Let's stand.